Hi, this is Eric, and this is Pina. Hello, howdy. So glad to have you, and Thank welcome you. to Stockholm's Groove. So we're getting ready to hear the song Moth, mm -hmm. and I'm just really, really curious about the title of the song when you told me that's going to be the, the song that we're going to hear. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could just start off um, with the title, but first I want to ask you this question. Did yep. you grow up in, in Stockholm? No, I grew up outside of Stockholm, um, straight in the, in the forest in Sörmland. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I grew up in the countryside with um, horses and uh, sheep and uh, hens and geese and yeah. No, the whole thing. Yeah. Now is that the north part of Sweden? No, it would be uh, it would be the west part. Oh, the west part. Okay. Yeah, in the middle of nowhere. You know. Cool. So, I do play music. You were doing, uh, I wouldn't say like Chevy cars. You know, you were working on tractors or whatever. Yeah. Um, or you were, you know, becoming a junkie. I reckon. So it's just three choices. <laughs> <laughs> I thought musicians oh, wow. sounded best. So yeah, I went for that one. Yeah. Awesome, man. Mm. Cool. Cool. Well. Like I said, I'm really curious about the title of the song. Mm -hmm. So walk us through, you know, why you chose that title. Um, well, a lot of the songs, unfortunately, is about, um, um, you know, um, anxiety and, and tough things that, that I've been through in my life and still am sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, so Moth was about staying off the light. You know, the moth is always uh, drawn towards light and people put up this uh, electric shock things, you know, to, to kill the mosquitoes in the, uh, in the evenings when sitting outside and having the barbecue or whatever they're doing. Yeah. Uh, so the title came from there, from staying off the light and not being drawn uh, towards what you think is positive and you think is a good thing for you. Yeah. It's actually what's damaged you the most, okay. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So w within the song Moth, mm -hmm. you know, it sounds like there's something that's coming definitely from, from the deep parts of, of yourself. Yeah. So walk us through maybe the, the songwriting process behind the song. You know, maybe the first thought of, I need to write about this. Mm. How did that come? For me, I write maybe, you know, uh, five songs a week almost. Okay. I'm very, very productive. Yeah. And usually it's a process where I'm, um, I'm trying to find the right song. And in order to find the song, I write songs, you know. So mm. the songs will bring me to the final song. While well, other people might work on one song for, let's say, one month. Yeah. So it's the same thing. It's the same process. I'm just doing a lot of projects on the way, you know, to, to find out what mm -hmm. you want to say and where you want to go with it. Yeah. And um, Moth is uh, it's a song where I saw the anxiety and the dark part as a little bit of a friend, someone who comes back, you know, and, and, uh, and haunts you all the time mm. throughout the life, you know. Yeah. And um, I'm very much into painting pictures, you know. I want, I want it to feel like a music video almost. Yes. When you listen to the lyrics, mm. it's often very ab ab abstract, and it might not be, you know, like a, like a classic story thing. But for me, it's important that I can see it before my eyes, you know, while I'm singing. It. So yeah. um, I wouldn't know where to start. You know, it would start with a song somewhere. I don't know which song it was. Yeah. This is probably track number ten on that album that never got released. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's so interesting to to write five songs a week and to keep writing, and that songs lead to the song. Yeah, I believe it's a technique. I think it's different people do it different ways. Yeah. But, uh, but for me, it's a way of, of keeping fresh. Mm. I keep myself fresh and I flush out. I always flush out. Nothing gets stuck, you know. Yeah. And it's a good way of, of taking away too much influences. Mm. Because I'm, I'm like a sponge. For me, it's very easy to become influenced by something. If I see a good movie, oh. if I hear an album I really like, the next day I'll be writing a song that sounds exactly the same. Okay. <laughs> I mean, which is pointless because it's already been written, you know, and it sounded awesome probably. Yeah. That's why I picked up on it. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you just need to flush stuff through your own system and your own filters in order to find out, you know, what sticks and what's actually you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone who's, who's a musician or who's a journalist or whatever, where you write stuff, you, you find yourself sometimes that you've been copying something, mm. not on purpose, but you know, you get stuck, like, oh Jesus, this is exactly like, you know, something else that you read two years ago, maybe. Okay. So I believe it's good to always keep flushing the system and always keep, keep yourself clean. Yeah. You know? 
yeah. in order to, to find out what you really are about and what you want to say. Yeah, and I, I just want to say to our viewers, if you're a singer-songwriter, if you're a painter, if you do anything to create, that right there I think is mm -hmm. worth its weight in gold, that piece of advice. So right now stop the video, go back and, and listen through it again. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, no worries. You know, this switch gears maybe a little bit. What are some of your inspirations as a songwriter? You know you mentioned movies and things, but mm -hmm. what would you say, man, this is kind of gives me inspiration a lot. Um, it would be a lot of art. I'd say art is very okay. important to me. I like, I mean, I paint stuff, yeah. and the drawings. I paint my own guitar, for instance, and I paint my own tattoos when I do them and things. Oh, so. wow, cool. Um, and then, of course, I mean, I, I get inspired by people who burns. People who, who burns for something. That's inspiring, yeah. you know. You can, you can go out and you can meet someone that's really, oh, I'm, I'm totally into animals, or whatever it is, you know, people who, mm. who, who you know, have a strong sense about something, who stands for something. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, it's, it can be the smallest thing. It doesn't have to be so, so grand all the time. It can be the tiniest thing, something someone says to you in the street, or yeah. it can be, it can be a, a glimpse sometimes. It doesn't have to be, you know, that divine experience every time you write a song. Sometimes it's just something small that, yeah. that inspires you. And I think the details are very important. You know? yeah. wow. A lot of people miss the details in life. They, just, they have this big, big target that everyone is just running like, like bulls towards. Yeah. There's a lot of small stuff, you know. Yeah. The, you know, the smell of coffee, you know, someone's voice sounds nice, you know, it can be anything. Yeah. Tiny well, thing. Yeah. Tiny things. Yeah. So pay attention to all the things around you. Yeah, I reckon so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the tiniest things that's where the, that's where the gold is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's where you find it. Yeah. And uh, and in the people you don't think yeah. it's gonna be, you know, it can be a, a beggar on the street or it can be yeah. someone's mom who says something. I mean mm. You know, there's, yeah. there's interesting people everywhere if you're, if you're willing to listen yeah. and look for them. And it's, I'm just really glad you're saying that, especially in our city, Stockholm, where everything is like this. Yeah. But you have to sit still and pick up on the small things. Exactly. Yeah, sweet. So who are some of your inspirations? Like some, maybe a band that you mm. like or... It does, I mean, if, yeah. we, if we don't... If, if it's a band we've never heard of, we could put up a YouTube video or yeah, maybe yeah. it's a really popular band or... I give, I'm going to give you a few, few good influences that I have that is important to me. I work, yeah. I've been in the music business my entire life, and I've been working with, with artists my entire life. That's been my thing, yeah. uh, both as a producer and a sound engineer. I've been touring a lot as a sound engineer for artists as well. Oh, cool, yeah. and, um, and most, not all the bands, but most of the bands that I listen to today are bands that I've been working with that I never listened to. Because I, had a, I used to have a, a, a thumb rule almost, that I never listened to the bands that I was going to work with. Because I won't, didn't want to get too impressed, <laughs> I always wanted to have a, a, a you know, mm. a sense of a normal relationship. I yes. did the productions for a lot of big artists and things, and I wanted to be, mm. be able not to be too impressed and to be intimidated by it, you know. Yeah. So many times I picked up on stuff afterwards, and that that's when I've been starting to listening to them. Okay. And uh, one really interesting artist that I like is is Woven Hand. For Woven instance. Hand. Yeah. Okay. If you haven't heard Woven Hand, you should check it out. Yeah. It's an American artist. He used to play in a band called. 16 horsepower or something, I think. Okay. Yeah, very There'll interesting. There'll be a link, we'll put that there. Yeah. They just click right on that. He's so. very interesting. It's not, it's not very commercial. It's, it's, uh, uh, you have to give it a bit of time. But yeah. uh, like the Beautiful Axe one song is fantastic. Okay. Yeah, you need to check that out. Another very interesting band is The Melvins. The Melvins, okay. Yeah, they've been around for ages. You know, ever since, I think, uh, Kurt Cobain even was the roadie back in the days. You know, it's, it's that old. Yeah. I might lie now. It might have been someone else, but anyway, <laughs> it's in that it's in that area anyway. Okay, yeah. So it's very old, uh, some aliens, and then um, uh, more known references would be Ed Vedder, okay, uh, great influence, and uh, Lane Stanley from Alice in Chains. I always loved him. Okay, uh, fantastic voice. So um, yeah, that would be it. cool, man. Oh, I'm I'm not convention. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, million, but I have to I have to stop somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, the last one's a real easy question. Mm. Where can we f hear more of your music? Uh, you can go into uh, www.flowerpunch.com. Uh, okay. So it's like a flower and uh, a punch. <laughs> like Guns N' Roses, but a little bit softer. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's better to get a punch than, you know, get shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. But cool. that's it, yeah. Flowerpunch.com. That's it. Well, we want to say thank you so much for Stockholm's group, Pina. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And uh, we it. hope you enjoy the song. Oh, yeah. Moss. See you next time. Yeah.